Search the Scriptures, study number 14 in the book of Hebrews is where we are at today. And uh, study 14 covers Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 39. And once again, we take these questions from uh, Alan Stibbs' book, edited by Alan Stibbs, entitled Search the Scriptures. And we attempt to answer some different questions every day. And today we are in Hebrews chapter number 10, verses 19 through 39, as we are, have begun just a few weeks ago, our second year in this three-year study. We're going to answer two different sets of questions today. The first set comes from the verses 19 through 25. How are we exhorted here to give expression to our faith, hope, and love, and seek in your own life to discern ways in which these exhortations demand your obedience? Second set of questions from verses 26 through 39. For those who have God-given light concerning the way of salvation, what's the only alternative to going on with God? Why are its consequences so serious, and on what grounds does the writer here expect and appeal for the best from his readers? Well, if you have a Bible, open it up to Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 through 39. If not, uh, you can read along on the screen. Verse 19, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess, for he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified him, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, It is mine to avenge, and I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Remember those earlier days after you had received the light when you stood your ground in a great contest in the face of suffering? Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You sympathized with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So don't throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised, for in just a very little while, He who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith, and if he shrinks back, I will not be pleased with him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but we are those who believe and are saved. So from verses 19 through 25, how are we exhorted here to give expression to our faith hope, and love. And then the second part, answer this for yourself. Seek in your own life to discern ways in which these exhortations demand your obedience. Well, in these verses, uh, we are encouraged to celebrate our faith by boldly entering into God's presence. And we are to encourage one another in the community of faith. We're told to gather together in order to build one another up. Our faith was never meant to be lived out in isolation. Internet church isn't what God has for you. It's you gathering together with a group of people of common faith and encouraging one another. It's so important all the more as we see that day of His coming approaching. Second question, for those who have God-given light concerning the way of salvation, what's the only alternative to going on with God, and why are its consequences so serious? On what grounds does the writer here expect an appeal for the best from his readers? 
Well, the only alternative continuing with God is facing His divine wrath. Uh, the consequences of that wrath are serious. They're serious because of the depth of the depth of the sacrifice that was needed in order to secure our forgiveness. The writer of Hebrews expects us to understand the depth of Christ's sacrifice, and he expects us to respond accordingly by living out a life of obedience and sacrifice unto Him who sacrificed so much for us. I hope you're living in obedience this morning uh, or this afternoon, this evening, whenever it is that you're watching this. I hope you're obeying the Lord. I hope you're laying down your life for Him. I hope you realize the tremendous sacrifice that He made for you. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. God bless. Thank you.